The RG35XX Plus is probably one of the best handhelds that are out there, at least at the time of this recording. The price to performance ratio that's there is just, in my eyes, unbeatable. I mean, there's obviously more powerful handhelds that are out there, but you're going to be paying so much more money than what you would pay for the RG35XX Plus. I've already done a full review video talking about that handheld, and you can go ahead and watch that over here if you click one of these uh, icon thingies if you want to go and watch that but when it came down to it there were a lot of people that were talking about garlic os 2.0 in the comments and how to install that into their handheld now i do want to go ahead and preface that there's a lot of functionality that isn't available in garlic os 2.0 because it's in its alpha stage right now so there are things like uh, gpu functionality bluetooth functionality um increasing or decreasing the screen brightness uh, things like that that just aren't available why you can't connect to the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's just, there's so many drawbacks when it comes to installing Garlic OS 2.0 that I don't really recommend it too much, but I do understand that the aesthetic and the overall layout of Garlic OS 2.0 is appealing, especially if you aren't going to be playing online, if you aren't going to be connecting to retro achievements, and if you're just gonna, going to be playing games that don't require a GPU to run properly or run well. So if you want to go ahead and do this, let's go ahead and go through all of the steps. I also do want to go ahead and share some of my experience with installing garlic os 2.0 and some of the pitfalls some of the things that you should go ahead and watch out for yourself some of the things that are needed to install garlic os 2.0 onto your handheld are a micro sd and then a micro sd card reader of some kind and a computer that way you can go ahead and get everything up and running in the description and the pinned comment down below, I do have a bunch of links to all sorts of resources, including where to find Garlic OS and some of the materials or hardware that I talk about in this video. If you buy anything through those things, then I'll get a kickback. Those are affiliate links. But the first thing that you have to decide for yourself is whether or not you want to use a branded uh, SD card. If you want to flash everything from the card that came with your handheld to a new, better uh, performing one in contrast to what was already there. Now, a lot of people, they are much more comfortable with uh, either SanDisk or Samsung or any other branded uh, SD card in contrast to what comes with this handheld because they tend to break, they're really fragile and they're relatively inexpensive, they're cheap, especially in comparison to that. But if you go ahead and buy two of those, then you can feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, for the sake of this video, I didn't even bother flashing it because I did get a new RG35XX Plus, mainly for my son. That way I can flash Garlic OS onto this and get things running so he can go ahead and play on this as well. The first thing that you're going to want to do is actually go to Black Serif's page. And then from there, if you scroll down, you're going to see all the devices that are supported. You're going to want to click on the RG35XX Plus. Once you go ahead and click that, it'll take you to the Garlic OS 2.0 GitHub page. First things first, you're going to want to download the bootloader from this page. It's the first thing that's at the top. Once you go ahead and click that, it'll download a zipped folder. Go ahead and unzip that and take the files that are from there and copy and paste them into the root folder of the SD card that came with your plus. Now you're going to grab that second micro SD card that you got for yourself. I went ahead and grabbed a random 128 gigabyte card that I had lying around. Go ahead and plug that into your computer and format that as XFAT. Once that's done, create a boot folder in that micro SD card. From there, we'll go right back to GitHub. Scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says creating TF2 bootable micro SD cards. On number three, right click on garlic OS. From there, you can click save as, and then you can save the file, but you want to delete the TXT extension on the back. Go ahead and delete that. And then where it says save as, drop that menu down and go ahead and click all files from there you want to make sure that you actually save this within the boot folder if by any chance you just save it in the root that's okay just drag and drop it right into that boot folder now we can move forward with step number four click the garlic os link that's at the end of number four and that'll take you to the assets page for garlic os 2.0.1 scroll down all the way to the bottom and you're going to find a file in that asset section that's read arm hf dash root fs download that and get that into that micro sd card slot in that boot folder extract that there and go ahead and delete everything else that's extra once you're done with all of that take the file that's in that arm hf folder and bring that up so that it's at the boot folder alongside with that init folder it should look like this 
From there, remove the micro SD card from the computer and plug that into the TF2 slot on your RG35XX Plus. Boot it up once and the system will automatically create a directory on that second card. From there, turn it off and plug that micro SD card right back into the computer to go ahead and add the games that you want to add. Now here's where things got a little bit interesting, at least when I was adding things onto this card because I instinctively just added everything into the ROMs folder. but in Unfortunately, that wasn't the right way to go about it. You actually wanted to add all of those ROMs or all of those games onto the libraries and put them onto their respective platforms. Also, I wanted to mention that zip files, if you like to keep your games in zip files versus just having them as their native files, that doesn't work. Also, if you want to go ahead and just unzip those game files and just have them in folders, that doesn't work either. You actually have to have the game file itself on the actual platform that's there. So if you want to play Game Boy games, make sure that the file is right then and there, right inside the Game Boy library folder. Not the zip, not a folder, but the actual file itself. If not, Garlic OS 2.0 will not be able to read it and you won't be able to see your games unless you go into RetroArch. Now that you have all of your games on your micro SD card, all you gotta do is take that out of your system and put that into that TF2 slot on your RG35XX Plus, boot it up, and we can go ahead and start talking about the OS experience. Now that Garlic OS is finally installed on your Ambernic RG35XX, we can go ahead and talk about the OS itself, what it's capable of and what it's not capable of. So one of the things that I first mentioned was the lack of GPU functionality. And really the only way that I can show you that is by going into RetroArch. So when you come here, uh, it'll load into Resume. There's Favorites, Library, RetroArch, and so on and so forth. Um, the library, I love the way that, at least aesthetically, how everything is. I've only loaded on here Game Boy and Super Nintendo titles. Super Nintendo mainly to go ahead and test that FX chip and uh, Game Boy just because I love uh, the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. I'm a big fan of the titles from that era. But um, favorites, you'll uh, see any favorites that you go ahead and uh, favorite from there. So if you go here, um, let me go ahead and go to Super Nintendo. If you uh, hit the menu button on here, it'll tell you uh, resume, restart, favorite, change time date, or change language on the game itself. So from here, if you want to um, go ahead and uh, favorite something, you can by going into the menu and then from there uh, you can go ahead and favorite it. Uh, from here, it's pretty much about as basic as it can be. One of the things that uh, I mentioned earlier was uh, about making sure that the file was uh, set in the proper folder. And the reason why was because if you were to uh, go into the uh, category itself, so let's say, you know, I went into Game Boy, the only game that you see here is Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. But if you go into RetroArch, it'll go ahead and boot up and we can go into load content and um, there uh, is uh, the media directory and from here we can go into ROMs where all of my uh, games are or go into library and from here you know we'll go into Game Boy and right here you'll see that the only file that's here is Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening but there's a bunch of other games that are here as well and if I wanted to load them up I could all I got to do is hit that load archive uh, pick the emulator um, let's go with just Game Boy Advance and boom there it is. It runs. I don't really have to worry too much about anything. And um, it's, you know, ready for me to go ahead and uh, game on. Now, if I were to go into resume, uh, this is where all of the games that I've last played are at. Um, I did want to go ahead and show you all how the effects chip worked on here. Um, the reason being is, uh, for those of you that don't know, the FX chips were... Uh, built into specific uh, SNES or Super Nintendo or Super Famicom cartridges because of the um amount of power that uh, these games required. So Nintendo, they would go ahead and uh, put these chips on there just to help the performance of the titles. Whenever you're emulating uh, something, a lot of these games, they have a hard time keeping up with things, especially if there isn't a GPU to help with the processing on things. I'm not sure if the mic is gonna pick this up, but the way that the audio runs on here is uh, pretty, pretty bad. And again, this is one of those things that I like, 
I look at and, you know, it just immediately tells me that the system is struggling to handle a game from the Super Nintendo era. Whereas, you know, something with a stock OS could just run just fine. Now, one of the biggest features with the RG35XX Plus was its improved performance. Again, this is a sub $100 handheld, so there's really only so much that we could expect, but you would be able to play N64 as well as Dreamcast and some PSP titles without running into too many issues with its frame rate and performance. When installing Garlic OS 2.0, you do have to take into consideration that there is going to be a lack of GPU functionality as of right now. Again, it's alpha. I'm sure that, that is going to come with feature builds. So I put in some N64 titles on the micro SD card that is on here just to see if it runs. I couldn't find it in the library on the handheld itself. So I went into RetroArch and when I went to load in the content, I went into my ROMs folder and went straight into N64 to see if it actually loaded up. And here is Super Mario 64 to see if it works. And unfortunately, it just goes ahead and crashes. Every single time that I go in to load any sort of N64 title, this is the same experience over and over again. So again, if you are interested in getting this up and running on your handheld, take into consideration that you're essentially stripping out your GPU functionality entirely as of right now, and only going to have CPU functionality, essentially making this a MiU Mini Plus, so to speak. There is no sleep functionality with this as well. So if I go ahead and turn this off, it literally goes ahead and just shuts off entirely. So uh, I go ahead and I go to turn it back on and it has to go ahead and boot up entirely before I can get back into my gaming. This isn't something that, you know, is a deal breaker for a lot of people, but it definitely is uh, something that should be just a basic feature. Again, this is a, a an alpha OS. So I don't expect this to run seamlessly or be top notch, but it is something that uh, I definitely miss whenever I'm, you know, in the middle of things. And again, there really isn't too much here. When you're in the main menu, all you have to do is hit the menu button and then there's change date and time, change language, and then there's a battery and then the timer that's there or the uh, time. So there really isn't too much functionality that is in this OS. Aesthetically, it's beautiful. It's very pleasing. If you're going to be playing 8-bit or 16-bit titles, you don't really have too much to worry about with this. It'll go ahead and handle it with ease. But if you want to play something that's a little bit more powerful or even some 16-bit titles that are a little bit more powerful, it just leaves a lot to be desired in the grand scheme of things. So what do you guys think of Garlic OS 2.0? Is this a game changer or are you gonna wait until this is fully baked? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and let me know if you have any questions about anything. If you wanna hear my thoughts on the RG35XX Plus, then click this video over here. And if you wanna hear my thoughts of the RG35XX versus the MiU Mini Plus, then click this video over here. I'll eventually update this link to go ahead and uh, have a comparison between the Plus and the Plus, the MiU Mini Plus and the RG35XX Plus. But subscribe that way you can go ahead and stay up to date and until next time guys i'll see you on the next one peace